1989, a brand new sound was birthed into the world. It was deep country, mixed with rock and roll and low down dirty blues. Now while Nashville might not have been quite ready, the rest of America was more than ready. Frankenberry's Pop Culture Powwow proudly presents our very first pop culture profile featured artist, the Kentucky Headhunter. The story of the Kentucky Headhunters began almost 50 years ago in the strangest of places. It all started when brothers Richard and Greg Young formed the rock and roll band Itchy Brother, along with their cousin and fellow Headhunters founder Greg Martin in 1968. The grandmother of the Young brothers gave them a practice house on the family farm and they began to hone their craft. Itchy Brother enjoyed regional success and continued to write and perform together for 14 years until finally they laid the band to rest in 1982. For Martin and the Young Brothers, this would only be a short time out. In 1986, they joined forces with another group of brothers, Doug and Ricky Lee Phelps, leaving the Itchy Brother name to rest in peace and being reborn as the Kentucky Headhunters. to the Kentucky Headhunters Practice House. It's in the middle of a farm that belongs to our parents. Uh, we grew up here and uh, our grandmother, Effie Young, gave us this house to practice in in 1968. And here we are 43 years later. Uh, the house is still standing. It's still standing, barely. <laughs> we barely are. There it is. We got, we're barely still standing. With their new name, new singer, and new bassist, they once again began to climb the rungs of the music business ladder. Though they and the fans that ganged along the way were confident in their sound, they had a problem. The rock A&R guys found them to be too country, and the Nashville establishment took one look at their long hair and rock and roll attitude and didn't know much what to do with them. Nevertheless, Mercury Records decided to take a chance on these long-haired Kentucky boys, and to the surprise of both band and label, the climb to the top wouldn't be nearly as hard or long as expected this time around. Their 1989 debut album, aptly titled Picking On Nashville, exploded. Propelled by the hits Walk Softly on This Heart of Mine, Dumas Walkers, and Oh Lonesome Me, the album scored the band four top 40 country singles, a Grammy for Best Country Performance, CMA Awards for Album of the Year and Best Vocal Group, as well as an ACM Award for Group of the Year. Academy of Country Music Awards, and the top new vocal duet or group is Careful on your voice, Sarah. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Kentucky Headhunters. Oh, gosh. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, there's a lot of good talent involved in this. And we, uh, we know we're clowns and we're monkeys sometimes, but we really mean to do right by country music. Uh, we want to, <laughs> I guess, look around the trash and be like, First time he saw us, he said, good Lord. <laughs> we want to 
thank a few people. It's all right. We've been playing together about 20 years, some of us. Uh, I ain't nervous. Uh, we'd like to thank our families, all of our wives, children, grandma, grandpa, uncles, daddies, mamas, cousins, a whole line out there. And I'd like to thank also the people back in Kentucky and Arkansas that's put up and listened with our music all these years and give us the opportunity to pay that dollar in them nightclubs to listen to us so we could keep rolling until we got a chance for something like this. God bless them. Hey, Richard. We'd like to thank everybody, each and everybody at Polygram Records that took a chance on us, Harold and Paul, not, and everybody out there. Because, man, I tell you what, when they took a look at us, <laughs> well, they thought, you know. let's all go. Picking on Nashville went on to go double platinum, and the headhunters lit a fire under the country music scene, giving it new life and excitement with their loud, energetic live performances. And fans of country and rock music alike flocked to their concerts and had their eyes open to a fresh, new style of music unlike anything the country world had ever seen. And at this point, you were supposed to open this, but you've got your hands full. Yeah. Carry on, my friend. So I'll open it and let you read it. <laughs> All right. Picking on Nashville, the Kentucky Headhunters. Lord have mercy, I didn't think we were going to get one there for a little while. I was getting scared. Uh, we're about trying not to take up too much of your time. Uh, this is uh, 22 years that we've been making music together. I want to say thank you to our families and all of our good friends back in Kentucky, Arkansas, Missouri that paid the buck so we'd keep playing in them clubs and do this long enough maybe to get an opportunity for this. Also, I want to say that I think most of us guys got into music because of John Lennon and the Beatles, and I think it's darn fine. That it, I never met the man I wanted to, but get on it on the same stage he did. That's, that's got to top everything. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. We love you. Okay. Um, on behalf of the band, we're very fortunate to be involved in Naris and, and be involved in this whole thing, as each and every one of us in this room are, and uh, it's, it's good that we don't forget that sort of thing. And uh, we just want to thank everybody for giving us a chance, a license to be ourselves. <laughs> thank you. Thanks to all the record people on our side of politics. In 1991, the band released its second album, Electric Barnyard. For the first single, they released a raw, fun cover version of the Ballad of Davy Crockett on the 155th anniversary of the historical figure's death. While their comical and colorful video for the song received quite a bit of airplay on CMT and GAC, the single spent 11 weeks on the charts, peaking at number 49. The band released three more singles from the sophomore album, none of which broke the top 40. The album was loved by fans, but received a mixed reception from critics. The album finished with a gold certification and won the band a second CMA award for Vocal Group of the Year, as well as an American Music Award for Favorite New Country Artist. During this time period, the band performed with Roy Rogers on his album Tribute and also released a single and video for the soundtrack of the 1991 film Harley Davidson and the Marlboro Man. And the winner is Kentucky Headhunters. We never, we never won an American Music Award. It's a mighty big thing for us. Uh, I guess what we like to say, we want all the folks that play music for years and years. This makes 22 for us. Keep up the perseverance and don't stop. Yeah. <laughs> right. We want to thank all the fans out there who uh, made this possible. And uh, the Kentucky Headhunters kind of feel this is a God-driven project, and we want to thank our driver. We'd like to send this out to our families, the guys overseas, and uh, Polygram Records.
Sadly, among all the great things that were happening for the band, trouble was brewing. Creative differences were growing between the two sets of brothers. Ricky Lee Phelps wanted to take the band into a more pure country direction, veering away from the rock and blues roots that the band was known and loved for. This eventually led to Ricky Lee and Doug leaving the band in June of 1992. The duo went on to form Brother Phelps and released two albums for Asylum Records, having some success with a couple of singles on the top 40 country charts, but never quite measuring up to the initial success of the Headhunters. Some like this, some like that, some don't know where it's at. If you don't get loose, if you don't groove, well, your motor won't make it and your motor won't move. Left without a singer or bassist, Martin and the Young Brothers reached down into their past, recruiting Itchy Brother bassist Anthony Kenny to fill out their rhythm section, and picked up Mark Orr to handle lead vocal duties. In 1993, the new lineup released Rave On. The band released the first single from the album, Honky Talk Walkin', and hit the road with Billy Ray Cyrus. Sales for the album were less than savory. None of the three singles released on Rayvon broke the top 40, topping out at 54 on the country charts with Honky Donk Walkin'. The songs were great, and the band was performing well, but it just wasn't the same. This just wasn't the Kentucky Headhunters that fans had grown to know and love. Ever diligent, the band didn't despair. Instead, they went into the studio and recorded That'll Work, a collaboration album with legendary Chuck Berry pianist Johnny Johnson. Though critically acclaimed, and no doubt a mark on the Headhunters bucket list, the album did little to return the band to prominence. The following year, Mercury released Steel Picket, a greatest hits package including the singles from the first three albums, Let's Work Together, from the Hardy Benson and the Marlboro Man soundtrack, as well as a cover of the Beatles' You've Gotta Hide Your Love Away that the band had recorded in 1994 for a Beatles tribute album. Luckily for fans, as dark as things look, this wasn't the end. In 1995, Mark Orr left the band, opening the door for Richard to make a phone call and invite Doug Phelps to rejoin the band. Soon after, Doug left Brother Phelps and Ricky Lee went on to begin a solo career. Doug took over vocal duties for the Headhunters. As to why Ricky Lee wasn't asked to rejoin, the world may never know. With Doug in place, the band signed with BNA Records and released its fourth studio album, Stomping Grounds, in 1997. While it didn't exactly set the world on fire in terms of sales or chart place, it did light a fire in the band's gut and produced some of the best songwriting the band had done in years. The band has been on a steady uphill climb ever since, releasing albums and touring consistently. In 2008, Anthony Kinney left the band to pursue other ventures. Doug picked his bass back up and continued to do the majority of lead vocals, with Richard also taking vocal reins on select tracks. The band is stronger than ever, and have taken things back in a direction closer to their roots in rock and blues. To date, they've released 11 studio albums, a number of live albums, and contributed to several compilation albums. They continue to write, record, and tour at a level unrivaled by any other band of their time. And with the release of their latest studio album, 2016's On Safari, it's clear that they're as relevant as ever, if not more so. Songs like Beaver Creek Mansion, Deep South Blues Again, Crazy Jim, 
Low Down Memphis Town Blues and God Loves the Rolling Stone feature not only some of the best songwriting of the band's career, but also some of the best musical performances the band has produced to date. Blues again. It was, you know, it's just one of those rock and roll, throw it to the wind type songs. Kind of an ACDC feel initially, but it kind of turned into a Credence type song as well. I had played the idea for Blackstone Cherry, and I was in hopes that they would cut the song, and we wound up taking words out of that song and making Bad Luck and Hard Love. Well, yeah, we were we brought just, up by the Headhunters musically. As, as music goes, they're all of our dads, you know, because they really showed us the ropes and taught us what we should and shouldn't do. It was amazing going on the road with them as a kid because we got to do, the, they, they got to play shows like Blues Aid. And like as a, as a young kid who was 14 years old, 13, watching, you know, Pine Top Perkins or Buddy Miles, um, you know, cats like Otis Rush, like, you can't pay to do that, you know, as, as a young kid who wants to play drums in a, in a rock band. So, I, I personally owe everything to the Headhunters, my dad and my uncle, Greg and, and Doug. <laughs> Out of this longtime Headhunters fan, On Safari is hands down the best album of their career, bar none. And their live shows are as fun and exciting as ever. If you doubt me, do yourself a favor and pick up the new album and make your way out to see them when they come to your town. You'll thank me later. That's it for this edition of Frankenberry's Pop Culture Powwow. Well, join us next time for a new profile on a new featured artist. And as always, life's short. Don't forget to enjoy it.
got even.